Having your A check for a line of sight to a player or some other target is something that's relatively resource intensive because you end up needing to do a lot of sphere casts or ray casts. In this video, we're going to take a look at how you can use the C Sharp job system in Unity to jobify that code to make it run across as many threads as you have available on your target machine. This significantly improves the performance of these operations. Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy. Here to help you. Who, me? Yes, you. Make your game dev dreams become a reality by making sure that your AI can keep line of sight in an optimized fashion to whatever they need to see. The C Sharp job system has been around in Unity for a couple of years now, and it's really pretty stable. One of the main benefits of using the job system is that it provides a lot of safety that you don't normally get with multi-threading. It also makes it relatively easy to do multi-threading. And C Sharp was not particularly hard to do multi-threading in the first place, but whenever you need to bring the results back into that main Unity thread, you end up doing some kind of weird stuff to try to make sure you can execute whatever results on the main thread. In the video that I did a little while ago about the top five optimization tips that I learned from making my mobile game, one of the main things that I talked about there that I got a lot of interest in was how do we do that jobified line of sight checking? Because I had these ranged enemies that need to check for a line of sight and I end up first using the job system to do this because that was eating up a lot of my frame time. So in this video, what we're gonna do is have a bunch of AI running around a scene and they're just gonna constantly be checking for line of sight the player. This is a little bit more simplistic scenario than what I was using in my game, but it gives you the same concept without any kind of additional complexity. There are two main design points that I wanna really highlight in whenever we're gonna use this job system. Number one is we need some manager class that's gonna understand what all alive enemies we're gonna be monitoring. When you first wanna check for like line of sight, you probably make an enemy line of sight checker script and attach that to the enemy game object and have each enemy checking for line of sight to the player. And that kind of makes sense, but that ends up being really not performant because you need to do an update loop on every single enemy game object. And it's relatively slow for Unity to call those magic Unity functions like update, late update, start to wake, whatever. So if we're calling across 500 enemies update, that's pretty slow compared to doing one update and iterating 500 times. So in this video, what you're gonna see is I have an enemy line of sight manager script that's gonna check line of sight for all of the enemies in there and we're gonna compare that to the Jobified code. Already using the manager script over those 500 individual enemies is significantly better for performance. And then we're gonna further improve that by using the job system. Key thing about all of this is you need to make sure you're optimizing where it makes sense to optimize. Don't just blindly implement this because maybe this isn't a challenge for your game. Maybe there's other areas that you should focus on first. Make sure to use the profiler to identify specifically where you need to optimize. This is one area that's very likely to provide you a lot of benefit, but if you have only like 10 enemies, probably this doesn't make a huge difference for your game. In fact, when we check out the profiler, you'll see that some of the frame time just shifts from physics time to script time because we need to prepare data for the drop system versus just running the code. So make sure you stick around until the end where we go through the profiler so you can understand the performance implications of doing it one way versus the other. Let's hop over into the Unity editor and check out the scene and then how we would implement sphere casting to check line of sight and compare that to the job system implementation. If we open up the Unity editor, in this scene we can see that I have an enemy line of sight manager that has an enemy prefab. I have reference to the player because I only have one and I want all of them to be able to check line of sight to that player. The enemy is simply a nav mesh agent and you can see that I have baked in the scene the nav mesh already. If I click play, you'll see that there are some enemies and they run around on the scene kind of randomly. I can adjust the number of enemies that are there up or down and will spawn new and remove some enemies. We can have up to 500 with a slider and I already have some variables that we're gonna use a little bit later about how wide of a sphere cast we should use, the layers we should sphere cast on, whether we should use the job system or not and the minimum job size. We'll go over those as we start using them. Right now you'll see all the enemies are red. The idea is once they gain line of sight to the player, they should turn green. That way we can tell whether they see the player or not. Let's go ahead and open up that enemy line of sight manager and start implementing a line of sight check the way that you might do this if you have an enemy line of sight manager without the job system. There's already some stuff going on here that's mostly just trying to keep the number of enemies alive to be the same as what you assigned in the inspector. As we change that slider, we'll remove or add new enemies. That's all that's going on in the script so far. What I'll do in update is add a check for line of sight function call here and then we'll define that private void check for line of sight in that function we'll check if use jobs and we'll just do nothing there later on we're going to go ahead and 
add a function there. And for now, we'll just do else do single threaded line of sight check. Then we'll define that function, private void, do single threaded line of sight check. In here, we'll do vector three player position equals player dot position plus vector three up times player height offset. We're caching this so that way we don't have to calculate it up to 500 times in this for loop we're about to do. We'll do four int i equals zero, i less than alive enemies dot count, i plus plus. And we'll check if physics.spearcast, checking first the alive enemies index by i dot transform top position being that start point, passing in the sphere cast radius for the radius of the sphere cast, getting the direction to the player with player position minus alive enemies index by i dot transform dot position dot normalized, passing out a raycast hit, using float dot max value for the distance. We don't really need to do the distance check here. That's a little bit slower than just passing a constant value here. Since we know we're going in the right direction, we know we're going to hit something. As long as the line of sight layers for the last argument here is set up correctly so we'll actually hit the player. If that returns true, that means we hit something and that raycast hit is populated. We're going to check if the hit collider is not null and the hit collider game object is the player game object. If it's true, if all of this is true, we've hit something, we've hit the player, and we know it's the player, then we'll do alive enemies indexed by i dot on gain sight. And that's just going to change the color of the enemy to be green, changing it with the vertex colors because they're a pro builder object. In any other case, we're going to do alive enemies indexed by i dot on lose sight, which will change them back to red. Let's go ahead and start implementing the job system now to see how would we do this a little bit more multi-threadedly. Back in our function for check for line of sight, in the if use jobs section, we're gonna add a function call to do jobs line of sight check. We'll define that with private void do jobs line of sight check. And this is gonna be a little bit more code than what we just did, but it's gonna be significantly more optimized because we can run it across as many threads as the computer or the device that we're targeting has. In here, I'm going to define something called a native array of type spherecast command. The native array is a special collection that we use whenever we're using the job system. You can think of it that it behaves exactly the same as a normal array. We're gonna make one that's called spherecast commands, make it equal to a new native array of type spherecast command. And we're gonna tell it that it's gonna be of size alive enemies dot count because we want a one spherecast per alive enemy. And the second argument here is really important that we call it allocator temp job. It's telling Unity that this is only gonna be used for a job that's gonna be temporary. So we need to be able to dispose it at the end. If you use some other allocator types, you maybe just get errors. So make sure you're using temp job. We're gonna find a second one, native array raycast hit called raycast hits. Again, the exact same alive enemies count and allocator temp job are the two arguments we pass. This is gonna store the results of our spear cast commands. We're again gonna cache the player position with vector three player position equals player dot position plus vector three up times player height offset. And we're gonna loop over each of the alive enemies with four int i equals zero, i less than alive enemies dot count, i plus plus. We're gonna do spear cast commands index by i equals a new spear cast command. We created an array, but we didn't populate it with anything yet. So we first need to populate it with the commands that we wanna issue, where the spear cast command is following the same pattern we did above with the spear cast of taking in the start point, the radius, the direction, the float max value and line of sight layers. You'll notice that we do not pass in the raycast hit. After we've populated our sphere cast commands, then we're gonna do something special, define a job handle, sphere cast job, equals sphere cast command dot schedule batch, passing in the sphere cast commands, the raycast hits, and the min job size. So what this is gonna do is gonna go as wide as possible on our processors based on the min job size. It's gonna schedule batches of jobs. So in this case, if we're using the default of min job size of 10, we're gonna schedule five jobs because we have 50 enemies by default, five jobs of size 10 with the sphere cast commands. And we're gonna populate the results of those into the raycast hits. So we're gonna get 50 raycast hits back across the five jobs. The job handle, the easiest way to think about this is a reference to those running jobs. There's all of those batches. And what we're gonna do here is in the same frame, we're gonna call spearcastjob.complete because we want it to immediately be completed in the same frame. But something you can do if you don't need it every frame, you can run this as a coroutine essentially and do like yield return null. That gives you a little bit more time to actually complete all the jobs wait to the next frame and then call the complete. And that'll allow you to get the results on the next frame. Doing it like that really further reduces the amount of CPU time you spend per frame because most likely 
the spear cast jobs will be done by the next frame. They may not be if you're running on a slower device, but at least that way you get more smooth frame rate. There is a maximum number of frames. I think it's three. If you go more than three frames, it starts complaining at you, telling you that you're waiting too long and this is a not supported operation. The idea is the more time that you wait before you call this, the more likely it is that your jobs have already completed and the less stutter you're going to introduce into your game by forcing them to complete that frame and the higher frame rate you can get. So this is really the worst case scenario is we're scheduling them and just telling them they must be completed right now. Once we've tried to complete the sphere cast job, we'll iterate over all the alive enemies or the ray cast hits, whichever array we're choosing is important since they're all the same size. We'll check if the ray cast hits indexed by i.collider is not null or that collider game object is equal to the player game object. Then we'll do alive enemies indexed by i on gain site. And in the other case, we'll do on lose site. So the same flow that we did before. And the final step here is we need to dispose those native arrays. If we don't dispose them, then we end up with a memory leak and our memory usage of our game will continually expand until eventually we run out of memory and it crashes. So make sure if you allocate memory with a native array that you dispose of it at the end. That's really critically important. Thank you, thank you, thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. I am so grateful for your support. Every one of you is helping this channel grow, reach more people, and add value to more people, and that means more people are making their game development dreams become a reality. If you want to join this cause, you can go to patreon.com slash academy, get your name up here on the screen, and get a voice shout out starting at the awesome tier. Speaking of those awesome tier supporters, I have Andrew Bowen, Gerald Anderson, Autumn K, Matt Parkin, and Ivan. I'm so grateful for your support. Thank you. If I run this not using the drop system at 500 enemies, we'll see that the enemy line of sight manager is using about 2.6, 2.5, 2.6, on average, sometimes 2.7 or 2.8 milliseconds. As a bunch of physics and about half as much running on the enemy line of sight manager behavior update. If we run at 50 agents alive only this time and check our performance again, after we let it run for a second, we'll see about, again, 2.5, 3.0 mostly. So something you'll notice there is if we're doing relatively few objects like 50, we get virtually the same performance as if we were running the enemy line of sight checker. But as we scale that up to 500, the enemy game objects take about an entire millisecond longer versus just having the enemy line of sight checker do all of that itself. This is a result of that overhead with Unity calling those magic Unity functions like update. Now let's enable the job system and compare how it looks with 50 enemies running around using the job system. I'm seeing again 2.5, 3.0, 3.2, Again, basically the same performance as we saw at the 50 before. It looks a little bit different here on the hierarchy because we can see job panel.complete is now there. Before that wasn't. If I switch this to the timeline view, we can see exactly where this time is going. If I expand the job section, you'll see that there's enemy sphere casts, about five of them below in the same block of the enemy line of sight checker script. So during this phase, we can see all the things that are happening here. There's a total of five jobs that complete to do the sphere cast jobs because we have a minimum job size of 10 for 50 enemies, that makes sense. But we didn't gain a lot out of running it with only 50 enemies. That's not enough to really stress the system as we saw even having the enemy game objects that didn't really do a lot for us. So let's increase this to 500 enemies and see what kind of performance delta we see here. After we let it run for a second, we'll see that the time here is now about 1.5 milliseconds. It's pretty consistent in the 1.5 range. If we open up again the timeline, we'll see that this is where we're really getting a lot of benefit because we're getting a bunch of execute sphere cast jobs going across all of my threads. Some of them take longer because some of those jobs are bigger than the 10 that we were talking about before. So some of them may be size 50, some of them may be size 25. I, it's got a little bit hard to tell here, but the ones that take longer are doing more spear casts essentially here. But you'll notice that gives me about another millisecond off the time versus where we just use the enemy line of sight checker without using jobs, which was another millisecond faster than having this on the game objects. That's making this take less than half the time that it took when we had the individual game objects checking for line of sight. That's a really good improvement. And it's really close to half the time of the line of sight checker without using jobs because we were bouncing between 2.5 and 2.8 milliseconds. And now we're down to just about 1.5 flat. The one critical difference I want to talk about as we scale this up to 500 enemies is you'll notice on the CPU usage, most of the time is used on the enemy line of sight manager update. This is in preparation of the data for use 
by the job system because we have to iterate over these loops twice, right? The first time to create all the commands, then we schedule the batch and have all the physics go across all the threads. And you can see there's very little CPU time spent on physics because we go really wide on those jobs. In this case, I've got 32 threads. So we're going across 32 threads to do the 500 spear casts. It takes up not very much time versus doing all 500 on a single thread. After all those jobs completed, we have to go again over all the enemies and call on gain site and on lose site. So this is actually the majority of our CPU time is iterating over the loops to do something based on whatever results we got on the job system. The job system portion is really the physics time that you see there, and that is extremely small. That was very well optimized for us. But it's really important to keep in mind your minimum job size here, because if I increase the minimum job size to something like 300, I did 301 here, and we compare results, suddenly my enemy line of sight manager is taking 3.5 milliseconds to go and it takes 1.6 milliseconds for the physics spear casting. If we inspect the timeline, we can see that there's one really large batch query execute sphere cast job that takes up the majority of the time here. And there's one other smaller execute sphere cast job and no other ones. That's because we're only running two jobs because we said the minimum size is 300. So the first job is size 300, then there's only 199 left. And that's the second job that goes. So setting really large min job sizes may not be the ideal solution for you. Make sure to pick an intelligent number here. Like we were using 10 before, that made some sense. If you know you're gonna be doing larger batches, then maybe it makes sense to increase that min job size because you don't wanna spend the overhead to do like min job size of one. For example, if we only have 10 enemies, maybe that doesn't make sense to have all the overhead of spinning up new threads, context switching of the CPU to only do one sphere cast. 10 may be also not the ideal solution. So play with these numbers to see where you get the best performance on your target hardware. As you can see, the job system is not a silver bullet. It helps you whenever you have a large amount of data to process and you can go wide on the number of threads to process it on. It's important to really inspect that profiler to see where should you apply these optimizations, where does it make sense to apply the job system, and where does it make sense to focus your efforts elsewhere. Think also about the target devices that you're gonna go onto and think, how wide can I typically go on this? And is this something that's worth getting that extra overhead of doing the CPU context switching between these threads? Or is it really better just to run through on that single thread? And of course you can run it through the profiler with the Jobified code and the not Jobified code and see which one performs better. If you got value out of this video, please consider liking and subscribing to help the channel grow, reach more people and add value to more people. This new video is posted every tutorial Tuesday and I'll see you next week.